How you doing? This is George Sander, the guy from Pittsburgh. Well, there you see a picture of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Julius Irving with, of all things, Donald Trump. And, of course, Kareem is a famous convert to Islam, and he said on Mies to Press this year, he wished Americans understood his religion better, but he said, Islam is a religion of peace. We do not condone wanton murder. So maybe the other Muslims out there should listen to Kareem. He's right, they're wrong. And in a new poll in Bloomberg, two-thirds of Republicans say they support Trump's call for a ban on all Muslims to enter the country. Now, uh, by the way, this is something I'm going to call the Trump moment. I'll do Trump news every day until the election or until the, the GOP decides who's going to be their nominee. Of course, Jeb Bush said... He'll never be the nominee. This is a guy who's down 3%. Conservatives don't want Bush. Liberals don't want Bush. Democrats don't want Bush. But he thinks he's going to be the nominee. And um, there was something else. But I forgot what it was. And so, you know, all Trump has been hit from all sides. Well, the thing is that there are... There's precedent for this. And of all things, Jimmy Carter is number one. In 1980, during the Iran hostage crisis, the Washington Post reported that Carter was announcing that he was canceling all visas issued to Iranians for entry in the United States and warning they would be revalidated only for compelling and proven humanitarian reasons or the national interest inquires. That meant that religion was considered in the processing of visas, visas and preferences given to persecuted religious minorities in the Muslim-dominated region. Well, the problem with today is no Christians are being let in, just nothing but Muslims. And Barack Obama said those who he accused of proposing a religious test for Syrian refugees, um, he attacked people like Trump saying there should be a religious test, but Jimmy Carter did it. And so we have Jimmy Carter, the worst president in American history, and Barack Obama, the second worst president, or maybe the worst president now, worse than Jimmy, slamming Trump and those who want no Muslims here until we get things settled out. That's not a permanent ban on Muslims, but we vet them. We check them out. They want to come here, we check them out first. Then if they're cleared, we they can come in all they want. You don't let a cobra into your house and it bites you. You kill the cobra. And you kill it before it comes across your doorstep. Okay, the Kleindies case versus Mandel. Supreme Court, 1972. The court said that the government's authority to set immigration policy as, as least as applied to non-resident aliens outweighs any free speech claim an alien may assert. That's in the Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal Congress legislation under Title VIII, Section 1182 of the U.S. Code says in part, whenever the president finds the entry of any aliens or any class of aliens in the United States will be detrimental to the interests of the United States, he may by proclamation and for such period as he shall deem necessary to spend the entry of all aliens or any class of aliens as immigrants or non-immigrants or impose on the entry of aliens any restrictions he may be deemed to be appropriate. Now, of course, I wouldn't expect the left, Hillary Clinton, Jeb Bush, to know the U.S. Code. I know something about it. I've read it. I've read parts of it. It's federal law. Hello, leftists. Hello, anti-Trump people. And we have Ann Coulter. Now, I don't always agree with Ann Coulter. Some of the statements she's made and actions have been pretty wild. But she said after Charlie Hebdo in January, maybe you should take a little pause in Muslim immigration for a while. And after Trump announced his own immigration proposal, she cheered on Twitter calling it my best birthday gift. Rush Limbaugh. Rush said, the GOP front frontrunner is driving a hard bargain. <coughs> Limbaugh explained to his listeners that Trump's proposal may not have been his true position, but was used to set the terms for larger negotiation about what the U.S. should do about ISIS and radical Islam. 
Trump supporters know they're in the gag, they're in the deal. The opener is the outrageous, the most outrageous demand you can make. Well, Mr. Limbaugh, I'm sorry to disagree with you. It's not an outrageous demand. It's protecting Americans. So I disagree with um, Rush. Boston Herald columnist Adriana Cohen wrote Tuesday, Trump should take his immigration stance one step further. In an age of terror, we cannot continue on the current force course when ISIS is vowing to level the White House and Iran is violating UN Security Council resolutions by launching ballistic missiles capable of carrying a nuclear warhead. Trump sees the big picture. President Obama does not. Well, of course not. He's letting them get nuclear weapons. That's why Israel may be gone in a couple of years, and I can bet dimes and dollar bills. Where Israel goes, they're going to take some Muslim countries with them, starting with Iran. Iran will be glowing in the dark. And the National Review, Andrew C. McCarthy. Donald Trump's rhetorical excesses aside, he has a way of pushing us into important debates, particularly on immigration. He's done it again with his bracing proposal. Some Muslims, and that's the bulk of them, come to the United States, practice their religion peacefully, and assimilate into Western tradition of tolerance of other people's liberties, including religious liberty, a tradition alien to the theocratic societies in which they grew up. Others come here to champion Sharia, resisting assimilation into our pluralistic society. Since we want to honor both religious liberty and preserve the Constitution, we have a dilemma. Trump has stumbled on this dilemma, one which Washington refuses to examine. He's absolutely right. But we don't want no Sharia law here. You want Sharia law, stay back home where you got all the Sharia law you want. And Trump compared his proposal to the actions of the FDR, limited the rights of Japanese, German, and Italian nationals in the U.S. following Pearl Harbor. It's short term, let the country get its act together. A majority of Americans. Well, not only the Bloomberg story I mentioned, but 56% of all Americans in the American Values Survey released last month agreed Islamic values are incompatible with American values, as did 43% of Democrats. New Hampshire State Representative Al Baldessero. After New Hampshire State Party Chairman Jennifer Heard Horn called Trump's remarks unrepublican and un-American, Baldessero called for resignation, established rep Republicans don't like Trump because he tells them like it is. I'm not prejudiced against Muslims, but until we can straighten them out and know who's who and who's coming to the country, we have to stop the immigration. And he's absolutely right. And there's another thing. The White House press secretary said Trump is unqualified to be president. Well, we have a thing called the Constitution. There are age limits, residency requirements. You have to be born here, and some believe that Barack Obama was not born here. So everything under the Constitution, Donald Trump is eligible to run and be President of the United States. Now perhaps someone needs to give this man in the next press conference a copy of the Constitution and tell him to read that clause about who can run for president and who can't. Obviously, the constitutional scholar in the White House as it schooled his own press secretary of what's legal and what's not under the Constitution. Mr. Constitutional Expert there hasn't told his press secretary about what's in the Constitution and what isn't. Of course, I wouldn't expect a leftist press secretary to even look at the Constitution. Oh, God, here we go again. I'm doing a video. Hold on. And finally, the London police. The Daily Mail reported that several serving officers have come forward to say Donald Trump was right when he stated, we have places in London and other places that are so radicalized, police are afraid for their own lives. One officer said Trump's not wrong. He pointed out something that's plainly obvious, something which we as a nation aren't willing to own up to. Another officer said his bosses gave him and others a dire warning not to wear a police uniform, even my own car, and the way to work. Islamification is occurring. Of course it is in Great Britain. They're calling for Sharia law. There's city councils in other areas that have turned the whole city into Sharia law. They want the, they've turned courts into Sharia law. That's because no one puts their foot down and say, this is England, home of religious liberty, home of the Magna Carta where we got our laws from. 
And Sharia law, by its very nature, is anti-democratic, anti-religious, anti-public opinion, anti-freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of anything you want. And no one in their right mind should allow this. But they're overwhelmed with, with the Muslim immigrants there from the former British uh, colonies and protectorates. So uh, they've let them get away with murder. And it's, it's time that the people there speak up. And not the 200,000 who signed a petition to keep Trump out of the country. We probably know where they, f they stand and how they feel. Maybe some of them are radical Islamists. All right, I'll be back in a minute with another video. Have a great day and be safe out there. Bye-bye.